Hello everyone. So, um, today I'm going to do a video that I have seen a bunch of people do, most specifically, um, Anna Reads. I will link her video below. She's the cutest person on the planet, and my goal is to be like her when I grow up. And it is reacting to negative reviews of my favorite books. So I'm going in with the philosophy that I'm going to get so butthurt, because that's just who I am as a person. So just prepare for that. <laughs> All right? All right, The Raven Boys. This one I know that there are tons of negative reviews for. I have one pulled up right now, and I'm going to get really upset because these boys have a special place in my heart, and to see someone um, offend them and insult them is going to be hard. But, oh wow, no. Just rename this The Raven Fuckboys, please. What the fuck? Okay, where do I even start? It's hard to summarize everything that's wrong with the book, probably because it's so unfocused, that's in bold, that the moment I think of something wrong with it, it distracts me with something else. But Maggie Steve Otter does not deserve this shit. The chief offender is Adam's subplot. If they come for Adam, I'm gonna... You don't come for Parrish. I will fuck you up. Most of the emotional fallout isn't even given to him but Gansey when he loses his abuser. Literally... Okay, I don't know what book this person read, but they weren't reading the same one I did. Gansey, whose main conflict is that he's rich and being rich sucks. He's the embodiment of unchecked privilege. This person really went very, like, liberally with the bolding. But the book wants me to dot 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 empathize with him. I'm sorry, but your lack of social skills and your failure to realize asking a person to pay them in exchange for them hanging out with you in the hopes of dating your friend is basically prostitution, has nothing to do with being rich and everything with you being an asshole. Also, Gansey is a shitty and possibly abusive friend? Okay, I have a lot to say. Alright, hold on. Hold on. So you're gonna tell me, you're gonna tell me that Gansey is, he's, first of all, Gansey is the best friend anyone could ever ask for. That is the truth, the facts. Don't talk to me about it. He, like, he loves his friends so much. Like, it's a meme how much he loves his friends. It's insane. Like, what per- I'm living. He his his main conflict is not that he is rich. Gansey many many times acknowledge acknowledges his privilege and acknowledges that he is rich and white and cisgendered and able bodied and he's got all that going for him. His main conflict is his he's got PTSD from nearly dying. The poor kid. He's got hardcore anxiety. He's hardcore insomnia. Like mental illness just like floats around in this book. It's hardcore, and I don't know how this um, critic didn't see it. They're talking about blue in this, and I'm gonna... She's a Mary Sue. What? What? Okay. Quirky and sensible, and she spends most of her time being your average YA heroine. Not at all. Are you kidding me? I, I don't think we read the same book. Blue Sergeant literally is, like, one of my favorite female YA protagonist because she's so she's so different like this is this is gonna sound really dumb coming out of my mouth but she has short hair <laughs> I know that that doesn't mean much to people but like for me that was like wow because this is so this is so dumb <laughs> but like all of the other protagonists in these books um, in YA have like these this long flowing hair and they're all like really traditionally pretty and it is really emphasized that Blue, like, cuts her own hair, and she wears whatever the heck she wants, and she's, like, is very creative and artistic, and she doesn't care what people think about her. And I was like, you go, girl, because I related to that, and normally you don't see that in YA literature. Normally, the girls are Mary Sue's, and it's also, I contest the issue of Mary Sue's being a problem because I think that there is a, there is a point for self-insertion. I also think that men characters are not given the same flack for that, even though they happen just as often as, as female characters. I'm gonna move on to another book because this is just making me too upset. Okay. I refuse, I will not. Okay. Last but not least, um, my copy of A Little Life is still at college and I'm at home right now, but 
this one is probably going to make me the most heated because, as you all know, A Little Life is my favorite book. So, some believe that this is the great gay novel. That couldn't be more wrong. Okay. There are only two recognizable gay men in this work, JB and Caleb, a creative queen and a violent, possibly psychopathic sadist. All the other possibilities are pedophiles, categorically not gay, or not so hopelessly confused and impotent that they don't know what they are, JB and Willem. Are you kidding me? Okay. <sighs> okay. My camera died. I am an excellent YouTuber, but, um... Let's get back. Let's just skip on back. Um, how dare they? First of all, I think that there are a lot of really valid um, critiques of A Little Life. Just because I love it doesn't mean I'm going to blindly support it. I think there's a lot, a lot of like gay pain and gay, gay trauma in it that I think are at times a little excessive and at times made so graphic for the purpose of being like overly dramatized and for being a plot point and like the gay suffering suffering story and there are inherent problems with that narrative and i acknowledge those and have issues with them but for <laughs> for this crit critic to like contest the validity of identity the pedophile part I'm not even going to get into. I don't know what I'm going to know. Luke does, I don't even count Luke as like a character that you can critique because he's so clearly a caricature of evil and I just like, he's so clearly designed to just be like awful that I don't know how anyone could construe him as gay representation because he's not representation for anything except for like evil. He's just he's the villain of the story. There are multiple villains in the story and that's him, Luke, and that is like a lot of the, our other main characters like internal selves. And also literally Jude and <laughs> Jude and Willem end up together and he didn't even say anything about Jude. Jude is my favorite character and he's not gonna say anything about him. I don't like that. Don't like that at all. <laughs> I will say this, this was written by an old white man, this review. So I'm interested to see what else. We don't get character, oh my god. We don't get characters, we get cartoons, cardboard cutouts. They are here only to satisfy deliberate plotting. Okay, I'm gonna read the last like line of it because it's just really like hurting my heart. Um, I think it's a masterpiece of a new kind joining closely related genres such as mommy porn and the venerable bodice rippers. This is arthurial sadism. This author is a literary, if you can dignify her as such, dominatrix. Every character is set up to fail and the impossibility of redemption and growth. The, and the person who suffers the most in the end is the reader. Set up to be crushed. Again, that's the whole point. All of us are the stories we tell, no less the novelist. If you read this book and found it amazing, I'm sorry. If you haven't read this book, don't. I have a lot to say. Okay, so I was pulled to A Little Life because of its tragedy. Like, I acknowledge that it's incredibly sad and we don't get a happy ending, but I think that that's important because life isn't always a happy ending. I think a lot of times life is really tragic and you have to really hold on to the happy parts within it. And yeah, Jude, who's kind of our main character, is kind of, like, he has a horrible life arguably, but also he has some really good moments. He has like, powerful friendships and relationships and he finds a family after he thought he would never find people to love him and I think that that message is very powerful and important and I just there's a couple things in here I was, I was just like interesting also don't insult Hanya Yanagahara like that because you come for her you come for me so um if you read this book and found it amazing I'm sorry don't be, because I think that reading A Little Life made me understand that even if your story doesn't get a happy ending or if it's not all happy-go-lucky and if there's like not a whole bunch of fluff in it, then that doesn't necessarily mean it's not a story worth telling. It instead makes it a story of fortitude and just like endless emotional and mental strength. And 
I I love a little life like Sophia I just watched a video um, your 2018 wrap up where you talked about um, one of Alice Oseman's books and being like no no it's a poetry collection and you said I'm thankful to have this book in the world and that is how I feel about a little life um, I'm incredibly grateful that I had the opportunity to read a little life because I think it really I think it was really formative for me even though I read it like very recently in like relative to my whole life of reading but so often you see that everything has to end happily and I don't think I know this is kind of like sad and depressing but like life isn't always happy that happens so much of the time and life could sometimes be tragic and awful and sad and that doesn't mean that your life is not valuable and important and that your happy moments in between possibly a sad beginning and a sad end that a happy middle is less important because of said middle said beginning and end I think is really overlooking a lot of important things so that probably went a lot deeper than I was supposed to go but I have a lot of really intense feelings about books so um, <laughs> So we're going to move on. Um, speaking of books, I just published one um, today, actually. She's live today. Uh, here's, here's the cover of it. Um, I, it's a YA novel about King Arthur and Merlin being in high school, being gay and in love. Um, it's a slow burn. It's got all the fan -y tropes going for it. So please go buy it down below. Paperback versions will be available in like a day or two. I am so incredibly proud of it. It's taken so long to, to make and like to create and to make it perfect. And I am so proud of it. I'm so proud of it. So if you want to go check it out, um, I will definitely link that down below. Um, I really want to see other people do this video because I think this is like a really interesting look into how people read their books is seeing how people react to negative perspectives on their favorite books. So like, like Katie and Cindy and Sophia like oh Anna Yushi please do this tag like I think this is so cool just please do it um okay I think that's everything I have um like come subscribe and check out my book that's so weird to say out loud oh my god okay have a good day bye